Hello everybody and welcome to the SI Digest where you run through the biggest esports business related news stories in the esports industry. I'm your host Tom Daniels, the sub-editor of Esports Insider and today we have five huge news stories from the world of esports business. So in today's SI Digest we're going to be covering North Carolina's governor signing a $5 million esports industry grant fund. Enthusiast Gaming acquiring U.GG for $45 million. Blast Rising unveiling its LATAM expansion. Weibo purchasing an LPL spot off Sooning. And finally, we're going to be talking about Talon Esports closing a $5 million Series A funding round. So, let's get into the digest. Our first story of the SI Digest is esports entertainment holding company Subnation Media and the Greater Raleigh Convention and Visitors Bureau announced that Roy Cooper, the governor of North Carolina, has signed a new state legislature budget. Now, what is significant about this is that the budget will include a $5 million esports industry grant fund, which will be used to encourage esports events and productions in the state. According to release, the grant will be used to impact the region and state's economic impact, while also being a blue print for other government groups to use in the future. It's important to know that North Carolina is the first and only state in the United States to qualify and incentivize esports productions regardless of where it's incorporated. Moreover, the Greater Raleigh Esports Local Organizing Committee was seen as a major player in the grant's inclusion in the budget. Now, for those who are unaware, the organizing committee was also responsible for getting the Rainbow Six Siege Major in Raleigh. Other noteworthy events which have been hosted in North Carolina includes the 2022 PUBG Mobile Global Qualifiers, the 2021 XP League National Finals, and also this December's Halo Championship Series kickoff. I think having a state sponsored grant will definitely attract more esports events into Greater Raleigh and into North Carolina as a whole. And it's very interesting to see the state really put aside a significant chunk, well, at least $5 million of its budget into esports specifically into esports productions and into esports events obviously the only thing is how much will that five million dollars actually get you is kind of unknown right now but it'd be really interesting to see if we can get more tournaments in that region and as if North Carolina can kind of become an esports state because it definitely seems to be putting more emphasis on esports as a result of being on this budget. Our second story of the SI Digest is multifaceted esports organization Enthusiast Gaming announced the acquisition of Outplayed, which is the parent company of League of Legends statistics service U.GG. Now, the total amount of the purchase is expected to be around $45 million in cash and stock, which is expected to be paid at closing and through a schedule of deferred payments. The acquisition also includes earnouts of up to potentially $12 million and that is subject to certain performance milestones being achieved within a two-year period. For those who are unaware, Enthusiast Gaming owns a variety of esports entities including Seattle Surge, Vancouver Titans, Luminosity Gaming and also media platform Upcomer. So it's very interesting to see them now kind of enter into League of Legends through the acquisition of a League of Legends visualization and data service. There isn't much more to say about this acquisition but it is another major acquisition another major purchase for enthusiast gaming who have really kind of cemented this model of merger and acquisitions in order to bolster their entire portfolio we see it with icy veins i believe not that long ago which is also a quite a significant deal in terms of a monetary value but also in terms of how it's going to expose and expand the brand be very interested to see how the league of legends data visualizations and the data services will be um, impacted but also how they will be enhanced now that they're under the enthusiast gaming umbrella and it's very interesting to see them kind of go into league of legends despite not having an esports team which is currently competing in league of legends as well so i think that that's also quite an interesting point it's not like a call of duty or a valorant service it is a league of legends service which kind of departs them from what they're currently doing with their esports organization. So I think that's, yeah, I think that's really interesting. And I'd be very interested to see what happens in the future and whether this is only the start of even more acquisitions for Enthusiast Gaming. Next up, let's talk about Blast Rising, which is an online CSGO series hosted by tournament organizer Blast. Now, they have just announced that they have expanded into the LATAM region. As a result, the third Blast Rising tournament will feature 16 teams from the region competing for $15,000 in prize money. The tournament will be organized by gaming agency Fantasy Expo, which is also a licensee for Polish broadcasting 
same right of Blast Premier. Moreover, the tournament will officially commence on November 30th. In addition to highlighting LATAM-based teams, Fantasy Expo has also revealed that they will work with local communities to broadcast the tournament in multiple languages to support up-and-coming talent from across the world. I think it's great to see Blast Rising move over to LATAM after two European tournaments. I think the whole ethos of Blast Rising is to provide up-and-coming players, but also up-and-coming broadcasters and up-and-coming hosts a chance to kind of you know gain more experience through these mini tournaments, which are you know have got a reputable name behind them in Blast. So I actually think moving over to LATAM will not only boost the scene as a whole, but it will provide the opportunities to more. And it'll be very interesting to see in the future. And I do think it will probably likely happen that we're going to see more regions be integrated into Blast Rising in the future. A penultimate story of the ASI Digest sees Chinese social media platform Weibo announced that it has purchased a franchised League of Legends spot from Chinese organization Suning. As a result of this purchase, Suning's League of Legends team will be renamed to Weibo Gaming with the team competing immediately in the LPL 2022 Spring Split. Both parties did not disclose any financial information, which is unfortunate. However, Suning has announced that Weibo will also take over its academy team as well. Another interesting piece of information is that Weibo also announced that following this acquisition, it will have a new mobile roster in Hearthstone and in League of Legends, according to translation from the original Weibo post. As of right now, now Weibo Gaming currently competes in League of Legends Wild Rift as well as PUBG Mobile and Arena of Valor. I think given the ever-growing popularity of League of Legends in China alongside other esports as well, it makes sense for Weibo to finally enter into the scene and we're really interested to see how much investment goes into this esports organization that Weibo have kind of pushed into. Obviously we've seen them go into other esports titles in the past and are currently competing in other esports titles as well, but this is kind of what you would consider like the main one one right now and it'd be really interesting to see how the performances change and whether there's going to be another new big player in the LPL which is continually developing, growing and gaining more and more popularity every year. Our final story of the ASI Digest and what has been a heavy investment-led episode is that Southeast Asian esports organization Talon has secured $5 million in equity capital during its Series A financing round. Now, the funding round, which was led by blockchain and NFT company Animoca Brands, will be used to develop digital and blockchain solution for Talon's fans. This includes delivering experiences, collectibles, and opportunities via different metaverses. It was also noted in the release that Talon will further expand its footprint in SEA focusing on the Philippines, Vietnam and Indonesia. As a result, the organization has announced plans to compete in the biggest gaming titles for each respective country. However, it has not been revealed what those titles are. Finally, the last thing that was really highlighted during this financing round announcement is that Talent will continue to grow its lifestyle and cultural platform. Now, this platform focuses on working with fashion brands, musicians and traditional sports athletes in order to integrate them even further into the esports industry. Just to provide a little bit more detail on who was actually providing capital within the financing round, some of the other investors for this Series A round included HANA Digital Transformation Fund and HCL Capital. Moreover, AK Partners, Token Bay Capital and Atreat Capital Asia alongside many others were included as investors. It's becoming more and more common that we're seeing esports organizations announce financial round successes and $5 million will also very much you would hope enhance Talon's brand and hopefully kind of strengthen their SEA presence in those identified regions that they had mentioned. Also, it's very interesting to see that they look to be going very heavily on the metaverse, blockchain, NFTs, which you could be considered very risky, but also could be considered very lucrative if paid off correctly. So it'd be very interesting to keep an eye on Talon. Obviously, they have a lot of different entities within esports, PSG Talon probably being the most known, but it'd be very, very intriguing to see how they can really enhance their SCA presence, which is already considerably quite large compared to other organizations. And that is it for this week's ASI Digest. If you do want to catch up on any of the stories that I have covered, then don't forget to head over to esportsinsider.com. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, and wherever you are listening to me from on. But until then, I'll see you next week.